Did you know that you can use magic markers with pastel painting? Over the years, I've discovered the advantages of doing an initial sketch with a marker versus charcoal or pencil. And I have found it's a permanent solution to the smudging and smearing that often happens with pencil or charcoal. So in this lesson, you'll discover the benefits of using magic marker with pastel painting as I paint these vibrant tulips in a colorful vase. Are you ready to get started? Here we go. The surface that I'm using is a piece of repurposed professional sanded pastel paper. Some of you may have seen my recent video where I shared how you can use a magic eraser with pastel painting. It's a great way to take older paintings and repurpose and reuse those pastel surfaces. And the end result is a nice and neutral surface to begin my marker sketch. My reference image was vertical, so I just flipped my surface around. And now let's talk about these markers that I'm going to use for the sketch. There are various types of markers you can use, but ones I love are called Tombow Dual Brush Pens. And they're a grayscale set of 10, different values in this set. And it's called Dual Brush because it literally has a different uh, brush or end on each side. One is more of a brush or a wider tip, and the other one is more of a fine point. The pen that I'm using here is number N45, and I'll be using the fine tip for the sketching process. And these certainly aren't the only type of markers you can use. I wanted to share with you just other times that I've done this with different markers. These are some Arteza markers, and these are some warm gray markers, and you can use different values of markers to create a sketch. And again, I'd like to stress the fact that these work great if you're going to be applying any wet medium on top, or if you're going to be even just blending some pastel with water on top. Also, many of you know I like to make my own homemade pastel surfaces. And in this example, I was working on a watercolor block and I need to add some texture for the pastel painting to adhere to. So I'm using some fine pumice gel and my favorite color of fluid acrylics. And I'm just mixing up a concoction to make my own pastel surface. Now here's where the magic marker sketch comes into play. I kind of overdid the sketch just playing with these markers. But if I put down charcoal or even pencil and put this application, this homemade application on top, the charcoal would have blended and smeared and the pencil may not have even shown up. So these markers worked great for me to make my own homemade pastel surface with a nice sketch underneath. So now let's talk about the reference image for this pastel painting and start the marker sketch. As per a request from many of my patrons on my Patreon page, they have wanted me to create more still life paintings. And I just loved this floral, uh, image of some tulips in this gorgeous vase. Isn't this beautiful? I want to give credit to photographer Anka Gabriela Zosin, and this is from unsplash.com, a great site for copyright free reference images. And now I'm using my Tombow marker for the sketch portion of this. I know that this marker is going to work great because I'm going to be applying some water and some pastel soon, and the marker will stay in place. Now, why am I making these marks? One at the bottom, kind of one at the top, and you see me kind of making marks all over. And the reasoning is I want my reference image to fit inside this particular surface I'm working on. And have you ever started a sketch and halfway through you realize it's way too big your flowers are going to go off the top of the page so it's a good idea to give yourself these parameters to make sure your image actually fits within your surface and in hindsight I got that one tulip the larger one on the right there a little bit too close to my edge I corrected a little bit with the pastel but just a note to you guys that it's best not to have elements so close to the ed edge. They should either be totally going off the edge or within it a little bit. You don't want something barely touching. And so these initial marks are just giving me an idea of where the elements are. I'm, I'm getting in some of the shapes of the flowers and the, the leaves or the stems of the flowers. And now I'm going to get in that larger flower to the left that's really reaching up. He's kind of out on his own, doing his own thing. And I also want to point out the way I'm holding this marker. Notice how I'm not holding it like you would write with a pencil or a pen. I have it held more between my thumb and, and first finger there. And I'm using 
to move the pin around more of a motion from my shoulder and my arm versus my wrist. Okay, now I'm getting in this little elliptical part, the top of the vase, and getting in that curve. Now, getting something like a vase correct is really something you gotta do, okay? Your painting's gonna look really amateurish. If you don't have the sides of the vase equal or symmetrical, and also getting the ellipses correct. Now, an ellipse is really just a circle that's turned in different ways. Or think of it as you're looking at a glass of water sitting on a table, and if you got right over the glass of water, you'd see a circle. But as you move and move your angle of where you're located, that circle changes. And depending on where you are, is how that ellipse or that circle is going to reshape or look different. And it's a fine line between getting something proportionally correct and having something looking so detailed and overworked. So I'm not saying you need to overwork any of this, but just have that general little shape, try to get that correct, and try to get that vase symmetrical. Now, I'm just sketching in some of these little elements on the vase that just look so fun to me. One looked kind of like a blue, almost like a hibiscus flower. I don't know if they have blue hibiscus flowers. And then there were some stems on the vase, and then there was like a, a goose or a some sort of bird. And what I'm going to try to do is create these elements to contour the vase so it will look very rounded. Oh, but first let me tell you about these pastel sets that I'm using for this tutorial. I used a majority of these two sets of pastels. This is the Sennelier Half Stick 40 set. And on the right there is the Jack Richeson Color Wheel Neutrals. The Sennelier set is quite vibrant, so I really wanted some neutrals to kind of uh, calm that palette down a little bit. Now, what on earth am I doing now? This is getting to point number one of why, or one of the benefits of using a magic marker with pastel painting. And the reason is it's not smudging, okay? If I was to start blending this pastel on top and I had used charcoal, which I often use a charcoal pencil, the charcoal would just smudge and smear underneath. Now, unfortunately, I missed some footage. I actually sprayed all of that pink that I just added with some water. I just used a little spritzer bottle and I used just a kind of a stiff brush and just worked it all around. So you missed that footage, but you can see the result is that the sketch underneath didn't bleed. Um, it might have gotten a little fuzzier underneath, but it actually worked in my favor, kind of softened things up. But that is one of the great benefits of using a marker. If you're going to be doing a lot of blending or adding water to a surface, uh, it's going to keep that sketch intact. And now we're going to speed things up for this painting here on the Monet Cafe YouTube channel. However, if you're a patron of mine, this is where the Patreon only content begins, where I give you detailed commentary, descriptions of my mark making, and more. And if you would like to become a patron to see this full tutorial and hundreds more, it's really easy and affordable. You just go to patreon.com slash Susan Jenkins. It's only $5 a month. Not only do you unlock so many lessons, but you become part of my Patreon family, which I love. It's such a great group of artists learning together. And we have sharing platforms where I can see your work. I give monthly reviews, contests, and oh, so much more. I would love to have you as part of my Patreon family. Now, let me share a little more during the last couple of minutes here. Oh, by the way, please like this video. It really does help my YouTube standings when you click that like button. Also subscribe and leave me a comment. All right, so you can see that even on this repurposed piece of UART paper that I used the magic eraser for, I was able to get great results. My marker sketch helped me so much to not lose my sketch when I applied the pastel and even sprayed it with water and blended it. So it really is a great technique, especially if you need a sketch for something as detailed as a still life like this. By the way, I have more still life floral images coming this month. The theme this month is Botanical Wonders, a celebration of flowers. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when I upload a new tutorial. All right, everyone, it was a blessing to bring you this lesson. And as always, God bless and happy painting.